When we think of cosmology, we think of the world that we're, we, we're standing on, this, this rock. Which one is it? An oblate spheroid. No, it's pear-shaped. A perfectly spherical Earth. Yeah, no, you live in a snow globe. Earth is a level, motionless plane with the sun, moon, and stars revolving over and around us just as you experience every day. The North Pole is the magnetic monopole center point with Polaris, the North Pole star, situated directly above. Polaris is the only motionless star in the heavens with all the other constellations revolving perfect circles over the Earth every night. Government documents admit flat Earth. Now, um, I had to leave a lot out this morning, so I understand that this is just the tip of the iceberg. But uh, and I met up with uh, I met up with uh, Mike uh, Jar Jarman, and he he has shared with me his Bible here. So this Bible, this particular Bible. This is a uh, Hammond's Contemporary World Atlas. This uh, copyright 1971. Third page right there. The plastic flat earth map called a polar projection. The so-called planets, known to the ancients as wandering stars, were named such because they were observed then, as we can observe today, to wander the heavens, taking their own unique spirograph-like patterns, making both forward and retrograde motions over and around the earth during their cycles. When you zoom in on these stars and these planets, to me, it's exactly like looking into a microscope. These things look like plasma, they look like cells, they change colors, they're moving around, and they appear to be in either helium-4 or helium-5. Just so everyone knows, those watching and listening, just so everyone knows, I've spent a lot of time digging into this, reading the actual documents, the present equation. Hold for any altitude. Everybody see that? Validity of flat earth assumption for atmospheric calculation. Look up how many people have allegedly been to space. It's about 550 out of 7 billion. Most of those from the United States and Russia. The mechanic has no idea what the king knows. Right? There are people working for these agencies that believe what they're doing is what they're doing. By a different interpretation put on data obtained through certain modern discoveries have been recognized to be absolutely true in spite of their apparent improbability, which explain almost everything are firstly, the positive existence above the earth of a solid dome constituting the sky, and secondly, the non-material nature of the planets and constellations, which are not physical masses, but merely luminous manifestations. This map has been prepared with the North Pole as the mathematical center. From it, distances to any part of the world may be measured. On Mercator's map of the world, polar regions are so scattered that their relatively small area and availability for flight routes are disregarded. Today, with airplanes following great circle courses, often within the Arctic Circle, polar projection maps are indispensable to the people of this air-minded age. Meanwhile, the fixed stars were named such because they were observed then, as we can observe today, to stay fixed in their constellation patterns, night after night, year after year, century after century, never changing their relative positions. They're making parts. They gotta go on something that's gonna get launched up somewhere. That's all they know. There are other people who sit on computers that get data coming from somewhere, and they interpret that data. Are they in on the conspiracy? No. They're just doing their job. But I'll tell you, some, some of these people are starting to question their job. Daylight is produced by the arrival and passage of the sun, and night by the disappearance of it. It is daylight when the sun rises, and night when it sets. There is no need at all for the earth to revolve in order to create these facts of nature. The beginning of um, the book of Joshua. You can see that. It's in the Bible. The flat earth is in the Bible there. Genesis says the sun, moon, and stars were placed inside the same firmament within which the, that earth was formed, not outside of it. Thus we have a completely enclosed system within which the sun, moon, and stars move, not the earth. Validity. You know what validity means? Something that is a solid fact. If it wasn't flat, if the earth was not flat, why would you start off a classified? 
under threat of law in the Espionage Act, why would you classify that? If Earth was truly a tilting, wobbling, spinning space ball, as NASA and modern astronomy proclaim, the star patterns would never look the same two nights in a row, let alone be fixed in exactly the same constellations for thousands upon thousands of years. I took a Nikon P900 and I, I pointed it at a building in Boston that was four and a half miles away. And then I pointed it at the moon that was up in the sky during the day. I could zoom in on the moon in far more detail than I could the Prudential building, which was only 4.5 miles away from me. I've never seen so much disinformation. The lengths that people go to to ridicule the whole thing, these forums like the Flat Earth Society, which is one of the first things that people hear about and find, if they ever even look into it, and then it makes fun of the whole thing and spreads the information which no serious flat earther even talks about. Here says a comprehensive study of atmospheric refraction errors for optical instrumentation. What is it based on? Based on a flat earth assumption will be published subsequently. This relationship is correct for a flat earth and a flat atmosphere. This relationship is correct for a flat earth or, and a flat atmosphere. And they're gonna publish these results. The passage of this breath of day would begin in the early morning and dawn, and the usual pause between inspiration and expiration taking place about midday. It might be considered that the breath of day has a certain luminosity in view of the fact that it is daylight long before sunrise, and also that the light persists after sunset, as well as during total eclipses of the sun. The reality is, that the Earth and Polaris do not move, while everything else in the heavens revolves over Earth and around Polaris, east to west, like in a planetarium dome. And they call it GPS as though there's some kind of satellite. Uh, that's absolutely not true. It's these are these are ground-based radio towers uh, that are that are being triangulated. So that's how you're getting your GPS. And in fact, XM radio and so forth. That's not satellite radio, that's, that's the biggest scam. Those are all from cell towers. So we just saw one document say, this is the correct underlying physics, flat non-rotating Earth. We see this document right here say, this is correct for any altitude. Facing north, the stars turn counterclockwise from right to left. Facing south, they turn clockwise from left to right, facing east, they rise in front and set behind, while facing west, they rise behind and set in front. So their apparent motion, angle, and inclination changes depending where you are on Earth and what direction you are facing. But their actual movement is always east to west. It can be seen from photographs taken during such eclipses that the details of the landscape, buildings and objects remain visible, so that the presence of a luminous factor not dependent on the sun, but provided by the breadth of a day can be assumed. They admit that these images are composites, they admit that they're photoshopped, of course. This gentleman right here who actually does it, Mr. Uh, what's his name, Robert Simmons, Mr. Blue Marble, said it's Photoshop, but it has to be. And of course, I, I listened to the interview where he said that. So this is not just a meme I found. I heard the guy say it. From the moment you started kindergarten or first grade, you were presented with the globe. And it's really that conditioning is really hard to get over for a lot of people.